Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. So today, step two of the process of creating our mahogany finish, hard grain and ribbon mahogany. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the first layer has completely dried, and I've actually put a barrier coat over it. A barrier coat is a preventive measure to make sure that the second application of the glaze doesn't possibly cause the first layer of glaze to react, lift, bubble, pop, and peel. Um, and all this is is a coat of uh, water-based varnish rolled on, very, very fine, thin layer with a, um, what do you call it? A 3 8 inch mohair nap roller, just because I don't want to take any chances. All right, now, if you're just catching up, this is part two in a th process of creating the mahogany finish. So if you're here, you missed part one, you'll find a link to it um, down below in the description area or right up here. Uh, but that way you can jump back and catch part one to see what we did. So we flogged it out, barrier coat, now we're ready to move on. We're gonna be using a bunch of different tools today. Um, but for, okay, let's start with the tools. Uh, we're going to need a, a, some type of paintbrush to apply the glaze. I'm going to use my uh, black purdy, black bristle, per, black nylon bristle purdy peacock because it's soft. All right, I have two because we're going to put a slip layer of glaze down and we're going to do our color coat. Uh, I just like these because they're super soft bristles and they don't leave brush marks, and especially when using a glaze, a good glaze, helps it flow out, brush out evenly. And for that, we're back to the Modern Masters tintable glaze. Can you see that? This is a water base uh, into your only product. Tints with pigment, never paint. Cleans up with soap and water, uh, but I can't reinforce pigment, never paint. This has a drying agent inside of it, so I can put this on and it'll dry on its own. If you add paint to it, it's going to dry twice as fast. Okay, so what we've done now is I've taken, poured some into a cup, like so, and here's our color. This is a mixture of uh, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and uh, magenta. So it's a nice warm brown. I will uh, put the formula down below in equal parts based on a quart formula. All right. So I stir that up, I let it set for a while, and I continue to stir it. That way it's nice and mixed thoroughly. So we have our paintbrush to apply. Tools to manipulate. We're going to be using different things here. Probably going to be using, uh, not probably. I'm going to be using my uh, brass mottler. You'll see how this works. This is hog hair. Set a piece of brass to hold it. Brass doesn't rust. Like less or, uh, inexpensive mottlers, sometimes I use cheap metal. And that, when that rusts over time, it leaches down into the bristles and messes them up with a wood handle. And it's all the bristles are set in epoxy, not stapled. I've been using this brush for, oh my God, <laughs> at least 15 years, right? Four years here, 10 years there. Holy smokes, at least 15 years. That's crazy. Which takes me back to my badger brush. He's about 15 years old as well. So this is for manipulating, and it uh, just depends. Sometimes I, I always carry two. This is what it looks like when it's 10 years old. <laughs> you can still see the, hand, the wood. Uh, but anyway, brass mottler. Here's our badger brush. This is a super soft bristle brush. This is for softening and just softening out lines. The badger hair, yes, it comes from the badger. It comes from the armpit of the badger. Um, what else do we have here? We have our slotted toothbrush. They take a regular brush. Actually, this guy's getting old too. See how irregular and worn the tips are? That comes in handy. If sometimes when they're too perfect, things are really perfect. But we'll have a couple here. Um, but they take little razor blades and cut notches in it for the slotted toothbrush there. See that guy? And then I'll use my vignette. It's my slotted tooth vignette. Same thing. It's a brush and they slot, cut it. Super thin, super delicate. I'll use this for outside pieces. I'm going to have to put a piece of tape here. Uh, I think I have everything. And sometimes I will even use my double-headed squirrel for some other things. Now, like always, I'll take a brush or a, uh, a comb, and I'm going to comb out the bristles just in case there's some knots because these are natural hairs. So, preferably a metal comb. I don't know where I put my metal comb just because the plastic ones will break over time. It just is what it is. But just brush them out nice and smooth, fluffy. That way nothing's stuck together. Yeah, it goes right through there. 
And of course, uh, like always, I'll put the links to all the tools and the materials down below. Brushed him out, look how fluffy and pretty that brush is. That beautiful brush made by the Luco Corporation over in Paris, uh, France. And if you stay tuned, you're gonna see some really cool stuff in 2020. Victorian brush factories, plaster, plaster factories. Just fluffing them all out real good. Take your time. Depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I have this wavy mottler. But then again, I can create a wavy mottler. See, it's called wavy because it's wavy. But imagine if you just take your brass mottler and just, oh, I got a wavy mottler. All right, we're over here. So, whenever the tools, all these tools, when you're done, clean them up. These are not cheap tools, but if you take care of them, it will last you a long time. The triple row badger, triple row because it's three rows of badger hair set in epoxy. There's no metal here. Again, the uh, metal furls, the cheap ones are cheap. They tend to rust and it leaches into the bris bristle. Um, badger, what is this? this is from off. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The vignette, uh, hog hair. The motlers are hog hair. Just take care of them. Take good care of them. Like this one's a little crunchy. So meaning when you're done, clean them up, and when you're going to put them away, put some hair conditioner in them. That keeps them nice and soft and fluffy. All right, let's get to it. So let's get our clear glaze. Now, the Modern Masters glaze, I feel, is a little thick, and I like to dilute it down a little bit. And that just depends on a lot of things. Temperature, humidity. Um, so if you over dilute it, you're going to break the product down, and it's not going to work. It's going to fail. Thin, so it's a matter of I just want it to be the consistency of uh, just thin. I don't want to say water, but water's too thin. Can you even see that there's not much of a difference because it's going on crystal clear? So, what this does is this is hydrating the surface, even though I have that barrier coat on there, this is still porous. So, what it's doing, it's drinking up this fresh coat of glaze I'm putting on hydrating the surface so when I put my color glaze on it doesn't absorb my color and gives me more time to work so what I did is I put it on top to bottom okay like so and I came back side to side it's called stretching it out stretch out the glaze that way you know you have hundred percent coverage on my finish top to bottom put the lid on it put it away okay our color glaze same thing, dilute it down. Never use paints, paints are too opaque. We want this to be a real, we wanna be able to see through this. Ooh, that's still too thick. We'll fix it when we stretch it out. Mahogany is a real delicate wood. Yeah, it could be diluted down even more. It's really thick. Oop, oh, piece of dirt. So this is going to be, we're going to sketch out our figure for the mahogany. This is just step two. There'll be another step where we actually tone it. So it's going to be pretty pronounced or almost cartoonish looking at this point. See how thick it is? So let's just stretch it out. There we go. Now it's okay if it has some variation. I know I was gonna finish. I can move my clip up here. Same with this one, they're just in my way. Top to bottom finish. Because that helps me create the effect. Okay, put that to the side. Let's see here. Get the arm loose. Now the pattern we're going to create for this. Oh no! You know what I totally forgot to do was tape off a section to show you ribbon mahogany. This probably isn't going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. <laughs> okay, so when we do this, look at a real piece. Luckily, I have a bunch of real mahogany 
veneer on the other side of the room um, because I'm using it to refinish some wood surfaces on a boat. So I have plenty of that to study from. So you always want to look at something. So the pattern we're going to create has some study pieces nearby. All right. So when we go, <laughs> we're going to start with this modeler. And I can do it either with the modeler or the slotted tooth. I can show you both. But we're going to take this brush. We're basically going to we're going to hold it a little sideways here. We're going to come up, and down, up, and give up, and give a little jog, jog, down. So as it comes up. goes the brush is thin as we come up it kind of gets wider and come back down I'm not gonna worry about that so it's super hard to see actually it looks really pronounced on the video it looks like I'm wiping it all completely off but I'll bring it in and show it to you so I'm gonna come in it goes all the way up up a little bit down and then back down so it's thin and gets wider now that's pretty much as high as we're going to take it here so on the sides there's a couple different things we can do it's not my brush I'm not ready for the sides just yet Take this slotted brush and just kind of pronounce get these a little bit stronger. There we go. I know, double the work, but it's worth it. So on here, now we're going to take this brush, we're going to hold it widthwise, we're going to come into it, and as we come down, we start to turn it. Because this wood, it compresses, so if you imagine this is the center of the tree, the heart of the tree, everything comes into it, or goes, to the, it grows up and out, but as it goes up and out, it also twists. So look, now we're going to take this guy, and come into it, twist it down, and we can kind of create a little thing there, boom and so on. Same thing on the other side. Now I could do it with my Mottler. I can also do it with the squirrel brush. It just depends on how you feel at the moment and the different looks you're trying to achieve. So if I wet my squirrel, pull it through my comb like so. I really need my steel comb. Same thing. You're going to take it, start wide, and bring it down. Now these, when you do this, all these lines run parallel to either. They don't crisscross, they don't oversect, they don't do anything like that. Okay, so there's so many different things you can do with these brushes. This is just getting started. I just twist it. But the nice thing is you can use different brushes to create different effects. Or not different effects, but the patterns of the wood. That's why you really got to study the wood. So the modeler come in, back and get it, pull it down. Okay, now we're going to take our badger brush. And we're gonna, as this tree grows, the sap would come up and go out. So we're gonna start this way. Actually, I wanna make a little bit more here in the center to find that a little bit better. Some of it's lost. There we go. So now we're gonna come up, soften up. And we're going to soften away. So this is the center of the tree. In the center, we're going to soften up as the tree grows up, pushes the sap up. And on the sides, the sap comes out. It's just out, out, out. Not back and forth. Just out. Same thing on this side. So this way, we go this way. 
just lightly, and then we're going to soften with it. This way I can go both directions. Very soft. Imagine you're tickling the surface. Okay? Some of this is hard to see at the moment because we're going to come back and do it. When we do our toning layer, we're still going to manipulate some of this. Let me bring it into you so you can see it. But now, oh, badger brush. You're using the tips, okay? Just the tips. Don't make, I don't want to see the bristles bend. Just lightly touch and dance across the surface. All right, if they bend, they're going to drag and create scratch marks. We don't want that. So let's start off. I can't take it off yet. Let's go down here. So let's do our ribbon. That's just simply a piece of trim. This would be a panel on a door, panel on a cabinet, or this would be your door frame, some trim, baseboard, crown molding, um, pff, car dashboards. To a degree. I like doing the burl finishes on the dashboards. So I've got my modeler. I'm just going to come through. I'm going to pinch it. I should have put the glaze on. You know what? My glaze is running the wrong direction. So let's fix that real quick. Let's just brush it back side to side. Because by the glaze going top to bottom, it's already fighting me. Meaning you apply the glaze in a direction you want the grain to go. All right, see the working time with this glaze? Isn't it great? Look, I can almost do this just with my paintbrush. So, back to the modeler. So, we'll just take it, come across, like so. Whoops, not bad. A little too much. Oop, did it again. I'm doing it lefty. Now, I'm going to make it a little more pronounced. I'm going to take my double headed squirrel. Get it some water, pull through the comb. I will find my good comb after this. This thing's nasty. It's had better days. And I have a, it's a flea comb. Oh, wait. Ha! Ah, surprise! There she is. <laughs> it's always right in front of my face. This actually separates the bristles really good. That's what you're looking for. See that? Look what we just did. Whoops, other than broke a hair. But we took a regular brush and gave it the slotted look. So I can take this and pull it through. All right, pull it back through the comb because as you do that, now when you're doing it, make sure everything works in harmony. This line is the same as this line. So look, we've got a different, more really pronounced grain, really soft, simple, tight grain, but yeah, okay. And stop the excess. Shake off the excess water. And water actually helps reactivate the glaze. It'll open it back up and do some fun stuff. Okay. Now, this is a little too coarse. So I'm just going to take my modeler. I know a lot of brushes back and forth. I'm just going to come over. Give it a little softer touch. All right, badger brush. Now, if this is cut from the tree, it comes from this part of the tree. Here's the center of the tree, the heart. They get the ribbon from the outer edges where it grows the straightest. So, remember when we said the sock comes this way and it goes out, so we'll pretend that this piece of wood came from this side of the tree, so that means we have to knock, soften this way. Very light touch, light, light, light. Now we'll go back and forth. Okay. Now I can show it to you. This is gonna have to dry 100%. I totally screwed up. When I flogged this, I flogged this bottom piece side to side. I should have flogged it with the grain, but you get that. But I didn't expect to do this. That's what I didn't plan this out very well. Next time, but you get the idea. All right, so take a look now. Super soft. I know it's very strong and pronounced. Look at that. All right, but remember, this gets a toning layer, so it's going to look very cartoony for a while. 
a very strong, it's just the way it's gonna be. That's where the tape was obviously, but yeah, I should have taken and flogged this this way, so. I didn't plan on doing it. Every time I was gonna do this, I was gonna do the whole thing with this heart pattern, but that's fine, you, you get it. Um, there you go. All right, now this has to dry 100%. It needs a barrier coat, and then, does it need a barrier coat? The blade doesn't require a barrier coat. I like to do it for added protection. Um, but that's it. So we're gonna let this dry 100%, come back and I'll show you the top coat. See you in a little bit.